Hello guys, uh, welcome to Workeamos. Uh, as you maybe know, Workeamos is a co-working space here in Santa Cruz and we decided to organize uh, an event dedicated to a very hot topic uh, right now for uh, digital nomads, entrepreneurs, uh, the magic uh, let me say, world of taxes in Canary Island. In order to do that, uh, we decided to partner with uh, Tenerife Work and Play that uh, uh, is receiving every day questions about it uh, and uh, with uh, Gabino Ramos Betancourt Assessoria Politica that is uh, um, a company that is uh, specialized in, uh, in taxes uh, that is going to solve a lot of problems uh, as you maybe know guys there are also people connected uh, online and uh, I'm going to leave uh, the word to Elsa that is the, the responsible of uh, Tenerife Work and Play in, uh, in Tenerife Thank you, thank you Petro, and thank you everyone, welcome. Uh, I'm just going to introduce briefly what Tenerife Work and Play is. Um, I'm Elsa Rodriguez and I'm, I'm leading this initiative, which is part of um, the public government here in, in the Canary Islands, so in, in Tenerife, the Cabildo de Tenerife. And what we do is we help um, remote workers, digital nomads, entrepreneurs that want to establish here in the island, so we help them through the process. And as Pietro said, one of the main questions they have is how do I pay taxes here, right? Because everyone has its own example, its own, you know, particular case. So we try to help them, but of course, it's always very helpful to have an assessor, so an advisor that is specialized in taxes, like we have today, Jorge, who is going to try to respond to as many questions as possible. We always like to partner with local companies, so that's why we are here at Workeamos, and we have Jorge here with us. Uh, for those of you who are here on site, we will run this for one hour and afterwards we will have some drinks and snacks so we can still keep talking. Uh, and for those who are online, please uh, feel free to ask any questions at any time. We will try to select them and ask Jorge those questions too so that you, you are also part of, of this even if you are watching us from, from your own house or, or your office. So that's it from my side. I will be around, so if any of you have any questions, feel free to reach out as well. We want to thank uh, James uh, from um, Cruise Creative, who's helping us with the hybrid um, type of workshop that we have today, and August, who's going to be taking pictures for us as well. So thank you, and Jorge, the floor is yours. OK. Thank you very much for coming. I'm going to take off the mask, because it's impossible to talk with the mask. Um, I imagine that you, all of you, have a lot of questions in regarding to to where I have to pay taxes because it's very difficult nowadays where to have where we uh, we have to pay taxes. So we have a lot of rules in the European Union, in Spain, other abroad in other countries. So it's very complex. Um, first of all, this is the main uh, rules that um, establish all the principal. Uh, requirements and proceedings that is necessary to pay taxes here. You don't have to know them, okay, because <laughs> this is my job, but it's just for to know uh, all of them. The most important part for me is this part, okay, the double taxation treaties, a convention that between the, the countries, because that is the main um, thing that, that will, uh, in the case that we have to pay taxes, decide if you have to pay taxes in one country or in another, okay. So this is very important. This is a very introduction, a very short introduction about, about the, the possibilities that have Canary Island here with a very uh, low tax rates that most of the other person didn't know because we have here a lot of incentives and benefits. I don't know if you know something about the Sona Sec, Sec Zone, something like that. No? Well, anyway. We have here, uh, but the EG, for example, the VAT is the 7%. You, you, that's, that, you know that there, right? Well, anyway, um, we are part of the European Union, as you know, but in terms of tax, we have like a special regime, totally separate. So we are not part of the VAT community of the European Union. And that changed a lot when you have to make an invoice to a person that maybe lives in Denmark or in Norway, Germany, or wherever. 
So that's the main reason why you have to uh, have a legal advice or something here to explain you, well, you don't, you don't have to put the VAT in this invoice or you have to put it or maybe the other part have to put it in, in, in your behalf. No? So this is very complex in this, in this part. This for me this is the, the most main uh, important thing about the, all what are we talking about today is the tax residence, okay? where I have to pay taxes because if, I, if I'm just living here for six months but then I go back home or, or wherever. Here the thing is the Spanish government what they say or rules say that if you pass more than 183 days here you are tax resident here. Okay? So I know that mostly of you have different uh, situations, maybe family in one country or assets in another country. So all that uh, things depends to determine where do you have to pay taxes and where is your tax residence, okay? So at the end of this uh, PowerPoint presentation, I will say that I can give you, I can give you a global answer to all the questions because it's impossible. We have to study case by case all the all the all the 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 question that you can make me to give you a special answer to all of them. Okay. That's another point that is very important. That is the uh, is considered the tax resident if the the main base of your, of center of, of their activities is here in Canary Island or or in Spain. Okay. That's determining also where you have to pay taxes. And also, if you have dependent, not legally separated spouses or underage uh, children, okay, children. Um, what is important to, to know also is that if you are tax resident here, you have to declare here all your incomes in a worldwide income, okay? Not just what you declare here, what you uh, receive here in Spain, you know, the worldwide. If you have, for, for example, uh, rent for, uh, for apartment in Germany, you will have to declare it also here. So at that term, we will have to see the double taxation treaties to know where we have to pay, in Germany or here or just here, okay? So that's why it's so important, the double uh, transaction uh, convention. If you are not resident, that's another point, you, you will just uh, have to pay taxes for the incomes that you uh, produce here in, in Canary Island, okay? And this is completely separate of the VAT. This is just the, the personal tax, okay? That you have, uh, we have, uh, have to present here uh, all the, uh, during um, April and June, uh, the tax annual refund, and that's what we call here la renta, okay? This is the different uh, rates that we have for the savings, that is it here, and for the personal tax incomes, okay? It's very difficult to explain all the rates, okay, but you can here have approximately, uh, if you, for example, have incomes more than 300,000, uh, you will pay more than, you will pay, you will pay 47%. So it's a high uh, in, uh, tax rate, okay? If you have this money here and you produce that money here, it's a good notice also, so. And here the savings is the same. So uh, here we here the the, uh, the government try to benefit uh, people that save money that they in, that that produce uh, incomes in some activities or wherever. That's why the the tax rates here are lower than here. Okay. For example, here you can you can have the, if you are investing in in stock exchange or something like that. This all go in this part. Okay, with these uh, rates. Not here. Here you only. Uh, the, uh, here is only uh, the if you have a wage or wherever. It's only uh, they go in, the, in this part of the of the rates. Here is the part of the VAT. This is the different rates that we have here in Canary Island. Okay. This is the general seven percent. Then we have the zero, the reduced tax of the three percent. That's normally is for. Is for um, alimentary goods, of the, uh, of, for example, the supermarket and all that stuff of things. Here are more for rent, if you want to rent a car or something like that, have this increased rates, okay? 
And then you have this special regime that is very, uh, it's very important for the people that are starting a new business or a new company or are self-employment. Is that if you don't pass the 30,000 uh, incomes in the first year or, or in all the years, you don't have to pay the EIC or the VAT here, okay? So that's a very important because most of the, uh, of the people didn't know and they start paying the EIC and maybe you don't have to pay it, okay? This is the different uh, tax incentives that we have here. We have for corporation tax, that for example, what I told you before, the SONA SEC, that is very important because you have their uh, corporate tax of the 4%, so it's very low. And also you have what we call here the RIC, that is the Reserva para Inversiones en Canarias, that is also so benefit because part of the benefit that you have to pay in your corporate tax you, if you invest that part, you don't have to pay money for, or taxes for that part, so it's very benefits. And also injury taxation for sitting a company, increase of capital, and all that stuff, okay? This is the main doubt that uh, I have received from Pietro and, and Sofia about what normally the people uh, are worrying about, no? So at this point, I prefer if you want to make me some questions about your situation or a situation of a, of a, of a friend or whatever, because I think it is more practice to, to answer uh, to you all the questions. So if you have any questions at this point? Uh, well, can I make a question like that? Yeah, you can make a question. Right, so I, I have a product in the UK, yeah? and if I wanted to take on a remote job, should I, um, how, how would it work? But uh, the thing now, the first thing is, your company is in the UK. Or you are self-employment, but that's so just I that. I have a property that I'm receiving income in the UK. You are receiving income from the UK? Yeah, uh, from a rental property. For a rental? From a rental property. Okay. But you work here? And you receive all the all the incomes here. I mean, uh, for your work. Well, I'm getting a job. So, where should I? How should I? Uh, for the moment, for the moment, how how long have you been here? Uh, just a few months. Well, for the moment, you are still having the tax resident there, in the UK. For the moment. Yeah, for the moment, yeah. For the moment, maybe if you stay, uh, pass more time here, you will have to change the tax resident if you have more than 183 days. Okay. Yeah, and if I were to change into a tax resident here, yeah, uh, because I would be staying here for more than 183 days, I assume. So, um, what would be the best solution? Should I find a uh, accountant, or should I just go through it myself? Uh, what's the best solution? Like the most. That depends way. if you are going to have activity here or you are going to have a work because it's different. Okay, let's say if I have work here. If you work here, yeah. maybe if you want to declare everything properly, yeah. you will have to find a accountant or legal advisor because you will have to do, uh, to do your annual tax return and you have to include all the incomes of the UK. Yeah. So, and you have to play, uh, apply uh, maybe the double taxation uh, agreement between the two countries in tax uh, relations. So maybe you will, have to, uh, you will need some, some legal advice. Okay? Yeah, it's not it's not so complex in in your case, but I suppose. Yeah, but to apply currently the tax rates and don't pay taxes in the two countries. Yeah. Okay, that is the main uh, problem here. You will uh, you will have to advise a little bit. So okay? where is the best place to find an accountant? The best place. Yeah. The best place. <laughs> 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 I don't know. <laughs> I can give you my card. Recommendation. Here in Santa Cruz, we, uh, we know some of them. <laughs> so, okay. Yes, uh, does um, the tax rate you mentioned, does it include uh, social security? The social security? Because you know, as a freelance invention, for example, I paid 30% uh, of taxes, you know, but I need to pay also 20% for the social security. So I just wanted to know if at a certain moment, you mentioned the tax rate. Yeah, that, that is tax rate, but also 
is it too different? Because you have here like two scenarios, okay? You have the tax scenario, and then you have the social security scenario. And for the social security, we need, we need to do another, another <laughs> of the webinar because it's so complex also, okay? It's where, where do you have to pay the social security? Uh, here or, or in, your, in your country? So it depends. But it's also the rate. Imagine that I earn 40,000 euro, you know. So the, what, what would be the taxation rate to include the tax rate and the social security? In Belgium it's quite high, it's 55 percent. So is it the same or less? In, in but I, I don't understand exactly your question because you are so, <laughs> so far. I, I think what we asked is uh, the tax uh, percentage plus the social security percentage, yes. what is the total? Is there an amount? More an amount, more muscle? Twenty thousand euros, more or less. This is not that's not much. Maybe thirty with the two uh, social security on the, on the tax. Maybe thirty three, thirty four, something like that. Because it's not a big amount. It's not a big amount. Maybe for the tax rates, maybe you will be in an average of uh, nineteen or twenty uh, tax rate. Um, for the social security, maybe it's the rest because the self-employment, the autonomy, is not a big amount per, per, per month. Because in Belgium it's a percentage of the income. This is what I ask, you know. Apparently it's not the same thing. Okay, I, I know. I think I think the social security is like a fixed rate in Spain. You pay like 300 euros per month. It's not a percentage over the bank. It's it's it doesn't matter if you earn 1,000 euros or 10,000 okay, euros. It's already the same. So it's the same. Now, now, now the government want to change, okay? That. The idea is to change that and that you have to pay the, the, the autonomy, the self-employment uh, price, depends of, the, of your incomes, okay? And for me that's crazy because that will, uh, a lot of people will not pay the social security. Because imagine that you have a lot of incomes, but you have a, a short benefit. Maybe it's not worth it to pay a lot of social security if you are not going to have much benefit. So for me, it's a little bit complex, all that regulation and rules, okay? But in your case, as, a, as a, he told you, uh, you have also a, a, a month per year, so per month, and that's what you have to pay. For every month. Yeah, all the same, yeah. Maybe if you want to increase the amount to have more pension, you can do it, okay, also. But can I choose, for example, a private regime? Yeah, so also, yeah, yeah. In Europe and say, I don't want the social security system from Tenerife. Yeah, you can choose like a mix. For example, if you want to have a, like a private, private one and also the public one, you can mix them. Also. You can but you can't not pay the one. Yeah. You have to pay, yes. Uh, oh, no, no, no. We, we have time, we have time, don't worry. So my case is question A, it's like 100% question A, so how would you uh, go about this? How long have you been here? Weeks only. Uh, weeks, and, you're, and, and, and in, German? in Germany? Go ahead, Erdogan. The people who are online are not listening to the questions they are asking, so try to repeat. Ah, okay, 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 okay. So your question is the Canarian who lives in Berlin, works for a German company and wants to come to telework in Tenerife. Who does it affect him fiscally, no? Okay. In, how long have you been in Germany? Years. Years, so you have the tax resident there? Yes. You pay taxes there? Yes. Well, if you have been here just for, for weeks or wherever, you have to, you're still having the, the tax resident there. Yes. If you're going to pass more time here, Maybe we have to check your case because you will change the 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 tax resident. Okay, we have some uh, a council for the um, tax administration here. That is more or less your case. Uh, in in that case, it's from Ireland that a, a company of Ireland contract here to two person. And what the tax administration said that is, if you are working here, telework here, and your company is, is abroad in in Ireland and Germany, and that company didn't have. A company in Spain, uh, you will have your tax resident here. Okay? So you will have to pay taxes here. After the 183 days? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for the moment, in your case, no. For the moment. 
and, and how can I prepare for, for that if I want to return? If you want to return now, as I told you, it's, one, it's six months more or less here, no? 183 days. So if you come back uh, uh, before that date, you will not have problems for for do everything uh, legally there at the same at the same uh, as you were doing before. No, but imagine I want to return and ah to return and to exactly. to be here okay. again. Exactly. I I have a lot of clients that do that, and it's not a big deal. We only have to check. Uh, all your circumstances, uh, where do you have all your assets, your properties, uh, where do you live, if you have children or not, if you receive the, the waste from the companies in Germany and also is the, the company of Germany are uh, in Spain or not. Before that data, you will have to check if you have your tax resident here or not. Uh, at the same, here now, in your case, I think that you, uh, in the future you will have your tax resident here because you are living here and you are working here. So you will have to pay taxes in Spain. Okay. The only thing is uh, about the retention in your in, in your wages that they have they maybe can put or not. That's another question. Okay. And your social security or other stuff that's different because you are going to pay your social security in in Germany. In your case. So in the future you will have to make an agreement between the two countries to receive your pension, but that's very normal now. That's not a big deal, I, I mean. That's very common. Sounds complicated. <laughs> no, no, it's not complicated, it's not complicated. In, in your case, no. If you have, uh, do you, do you want? Yes, there is something that's not clear regarding the 183 days. If I arrived last year, a few months ago, when do they start? When I arrive or on the 1st of January 2021? It's an annual, uh, a natural year. The one to, uh, of, of January to the 31 of December okay. during the period, okay? okay thank you. Yes, if you ask for the six month residence card, does it mean that for the island you are officially a resident for taxation? Uh, yes. In Tenerife? Yeah. Because some people said, oh, you should uh, ask for the resident card even if you stay three months. Because you can have some reduction, you know, to go to the No, but that's another thing. That's another thing. One thing is uh, getting the green card of, uh, that we call here of the uh, NIA or something like that. Uh, it is uh, that you have to apply in the policia. So it's like I'm resting here for the moment. And other thing is the tax resident, okay? Because most of the people confuse about that. Because maybe you are resident here, but you don't have the tax resident here because you are traveling a lot or you uh, have a lot of clients in Denmark or wherever and you're all the time traveling. So that depends on uh, how you work or how your company is working uh, in your case. So that depends a lot. That's what I mean. But that's the, the resident card is just another proof that can be used to say, okay, I'm a tax resident here in Spain, okay? Or in yeah, Tenerife in this case. It's not sufficient. But it's not enough, it's not enough, yeah, yeah, that's not enough. Yes. Second. Hello, I'm self-employed in Poland. I want to come to Tenerife for five months each year to work remotely. Can I still pay social security and taxes in Poland? Social security and taxes in Poland. She, 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 she said uh, self-employment in Poland? Yes. Okay. So she's self-employed in Poland but wants to come to Tenerife for five months only each year to work remotely. Can she still pay social security and taxes in, in Poland? Poland? Normally in that situation, if you are part of the European Union, uh, the self-employment uh, uh, workers can, uh, if they communicate and say to the, his social security administration, okay, I'm going to work abroad in, a, in another uh, country of the European Union, normally you have two years, a period of two years that you, you can work abroad, okay? If you notice your social security administration in that part, if, the, if that person have noticed the, tax administration, the social security of the country of Poland, yeah. maybe uh, he can uh, still pay in the self-employment in Poland. About the taxes is different, because about the taxes, maybe if he passed here, uh, she said, five, five months. Five months, yeah. Five months is not 183. Yeah. In that case, she will pay uh, as tax resident in Poland at the moment. All right, can I go with one more? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> 
regarding, so this is from Jill Stone, regarding taxation to income from property overseas, how does the tax office know what income and only gets if they don't declare it? <laughs> well, that's, a good, that's a good question. Okay. You, uh, we have to know that, um, we have to notice that the tax administration didn't, didn't know everything about us. Okay? So they uh, didn't know if you have maybe a house or apartment or wherever in Belize, in Mexico, or, or wherever in Panama. Okay? You have the mandatory to declare it, okay? You have the mandatory to say, okay, I have a house here, I have a tax resident here in Spain, I have to here. And you have to declare for that asset. What do people do? Well, that depends on the client, <laughs> or if you want to declare it or not. That's so personal, okay? Yeah. But you have the mandatory to do it. <laughs> That's the most important thing that you have to know. Number one? Yeah? Another question? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We've got quite a few, actually. <laughs> Uh, Jasmine, uh, if I want to live in Tenerife, maybe second residence, but work for a German company and can have my first residence in Germany at my parents' house, where do I have to pay taxes and how? Wow. There's some good come on. Wow. <laughs> I assume that, that she lives in his parents' house, no? Yeah. <laughs> for the moment. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, she works for a German company. Yeah, she works for a German company. Can I have my first residence in Germany at my parents' house? Where do I have to pay taxes and how? But she wants to live in Tenerife, maybe as a second residency. Well, that, that's have no sense in the terms yeah, yeah. of taxes because <laughs> <laughs> it's not about the first residence and the second residence. It's about where do you receive or work your income or, or do your work. So. If he's going to come here and to work from here, it depends on the 183 days and, and also depends on where is the company that pay for you. That's nothing more. That, that case is very strange. Yeah. <laughs> more questions or...? Uh, okay, yeah. Actually, just one just come in now. Although, apologies for my Spanish here. <laughs> How does that the debaca work? The back of work? The back of the, the, okay, so ah, that's, that's, that's okay. That's my Spanish. Okay. How, how does that's the back of work? I've heard you can temporarily suspend your self employment and start over when you need or want to. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, for example, if, if you're in Spain, if you are self employment, you can um, uh, submit and, uh, and get out of the social security self employment uh, administration three times in a year without any charge or any, any, any and uh, without losing any benefits or incentives that you can have. Because here in Spain, we have some benefits and incentives so that for the self-employment, more for the women than for the men now. For example, if you want to create or start a, a new company as a self-employment, you don't have to pay the social security total amount, okay? You just have to pay for the first 12 years, like more or less 50, 55 euros or 60, and this, um, after 12 months, you will increase progressing until the 200 and, 275, that is now, more or less, okay, 77, that is now the total amount. So, if you want to start a business now, that's very, 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 very incentive because you don't have to pay much expenses in social security things and tax, also tax things, okay? So that depends on what the people want to do. That's it for online questions for the minute? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you can do a lot of pajas and altas. Okay. <laughs> One question about the zona sec. Zona sec, okay. So if uh, I want to uh, apply, with a new company for the Sonacet. Yeah. I know that I need to do, in I need to, to hire five people. Yeah. Uh, the first question is uh, if uh, those people need to be Spanish, Canadian? No. 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 The, the people have to be uh, living here, have the resident here in, in Spain. But they, can, they can be for all, all the countries. That they, don't, they don't put any discrimination in that, in that terms, okay? So, in the Canary Island. Yeah, yeah, they have to live here in the Canary Island. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, if they want, if you want to contract someone in Madrid and, can, and uh, to to work here, you can do it. Yeah, yeah, but they have to be here. Yeah, they have to be here. Yeah, that, that's the main thing. Yeah, they have to be here and work from here. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, the next question is: uh, uh, I need to invest uh, one thousand one thousand one hundred thousand euros. Yeah. Euro, in yeah. So, which kind of investment? The first thing is that you have the, the two years time to your to invest that money. That's the, the first thing. And also you have you can invest for for example if you want to, to buy a car, a place, uh, you have a lot of assets that you can buy for a star business and all that assets you can put it into into the investment. Into that one hundred and uh, one hundred thousand that you have to invest. And if I'm a technology company and I want to buy a building. Yeah. Can I start to rent this building? Uh, no. But what things no. that are not related to my no, no, no. business? No, no, that's no. So if you are going to buy a building, the building has to be for the company. I mean, you cannot rent the building and say this is part of the company. Okay. That's because maybe a lot of people confused with that what that things, but if you uh, buy assets or whatever in relation with the with the company you have to use it for the company okay to produce something goods or whatever service or whatever okay what if the business is to rent the property like part of the property yeah but it's not uh, for the sona sec in this in this case that's that's not a act, a economic activity that is that, that is allowed to to be in that zone okay according to what eh? according to what to the rules of the uh, of the economic uh, that is economic space of home. What if you buy a property to buy to, to do a hotel? You can do it in the in the, in the Sona sec. You can do nothing in relation with uh, hostelry or or tourism or whatever. That's the only part and constructions. All the other part are not allowed in the so in the. It's for increase. The production of uh, good technology, good goods, or IT, or all that type of things. You know, mobile applications, uh, to be like uh, a small Silicon Valley, something like that, okay? Because we are all dependent of the tourism, so we want to create other type of incomes. Okay, yeah, another question. Uh, okay. Do you get any tax benefits in buying a property if you're under 35? What, sorry? Any tax benefits for buying a property if you're under 35 here in Canary Island? The tax benefit? Do you get any tax benefit or discount or on the on the ITP uh, if you buy property? Yeah, yeah, you have, you have. Yeah, you have. Like uh, you have like a discount of the to pass for the 6.5 percent to the 4 percent, mm -hmm. and you have if uh, you pass some requirements that have, uh, that put you. But you don't have to be a, a citizen of Spain. Like you can still like as a citizen of Venezuela. Yeah, um, but you have the resident here. I have a resident here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a non-lucrative business. Yeah, but you can apply for that. So, yeah, yeah, you so, can apply for that. Yeah. Okay, so it's not only for Spanish. It's not only for Spanish. It's for everybody that lives here. Uh, so in the UK, if you sell your first house, you don't have to pay tax on the gains you make. Check the gain, no? Here is the same. It's the same. It's the same. Uh, yeah, you 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 put uh, all the expenses that you pay for the house. And the, and the, and you calculate the gain and you pay for that. More, more or less, what I put before is you pay you pay depends of this. Okay. If the gain is between this, you pay the twenty three percent. I mean, you pay first for the six uh, for the first six thousand, you pay the ninety percent for the if you pass then sixty thousand to fifty thousand to twenty one. And all the all, all, all the time like that, okay? No, I don't get it. For example, if you if you have a gain, if you have a gain of the twenty thousand, okay? Sure. Twenty thousand. The first six thousand of that twenty goes with the nineteen. The next sixty thousand to fifty one uh, well, in the case of twenty go to twenty one. Okay. Okay? So the average is not twenty one, it's less. That's so happened the same here. So it doesn't matter if it's your first property? No. Something more? Or? We have a lot of questions in the online. Yes, I've got even more. Unless, unless you guys have more here. I've got one. Uh, on the very last side that you were in the questions, is question number B, is there any difference 
Uh. Number B, this one. Yeah. A British who comes to live in Tenerife and teleworks from here for a British company. Here's it's the same that I told before. If you are working here and you pass here more than 183 days, you will maybe or probably have the tax resident here and have to pay taxes here. That's, a, that's normal. Same rule as the, the only thing here uh, between the UK and, and Spain that everyone here knows is the Brexit. So we have to check all the bilateral uh, convention between the two countries because they are now uh, again negotiation all that of that agreement and are continually changing now. So we have to check all the all the cases to know where you have to pay taxes in that case because maybe you have to the resident here but the double treatment between the co the, 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 the countries say another thing and you have to play that thing okay and so the only way uh, they will know that uh, Spain will know that I'm here if I um, declare it right yeah yeah me not that I it's want so, to declare it. yeah it, it, it's, it's so difficult for the uh, Spanish tax administration to know that you are here okay it's so difficult because maybe you can put the empadronamiento, what we call here, also here, but they never uh, um, trust all, uh, all the data of the, of the major office or wherever, so it's so difficult to them. Other thing is if you put here, uh, you submit here as a, as a set of employment or wherever, that's another thing. Okay? Okay. Yeah, what well, well, my sister is, is telling me is that uh, it's my sister again. Okay? <laughs> 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 uh, is that um, an international um, organization that uh, is the one that uh, marks all the proceedings and requirements in tax issues? Okay, S uh, says to all the governments that in this pandemic situation, all the governments will have to be more lax in the terms of tax. Things because maybe a lot of people are in in Germany and they can they can move to the permanent resident that maybe he lives in or she lives in Ukraine or France or wherever. So because now you can travel safety and <laughs> with <laughs> and fast. So now they are going to be like more soft in that terms. Okay. No, no, your, your company no, is for you, yes, the problem. I don't care about Not for your company. Um, one question. So, for me, it's not clear that everything is about the tax residence in, in terms of, of taxes. Yeah. You said that social security is a completely different uh, topic. Completely different, no, but it's, it's a little bit different because that depends also on the social security of the two countries and also if they have you know, the agreement between them and if you are part of the European Union or not. So, for example, if you're in the UK, you have more problems there. If you are in Germany, for example, you will not have problems in terms of social security. Is, is there like a rule of thumb uh, for deciding where to pay social security if you're working for another company in the European Union? Yeah, yeah. You, have, you also have a lot, uh, some rules that say to you, okay, if you are working just for a uh, temporary uh, six months, for example, here in Spain, you will continue paying the social security in Germany, but if you pass that time, you will have to pay it, uh, the social security here. I mean the company, because the company is, is the, the one that has to pay uh, taxes yeah. for you. But normally in, in that case, that uh, you are just one person working from here, you will pay the social security in Germany. The, I mean your company. And that's another problem for you, because you are paying, or the company is paying that social security. In the time that you want to retire, you will have your pension, as if you, uh, at the same if you are here, the same, the same, completely the same. Maybe you have more, more pension in, uh, from Germany than from here, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Well, I, the, the question for me right now is that I have to convince my employer that they're not going to get into trouble if I am here a long time. No, they're, they're not getting into to any trouble. The thing is that, for example, if they change uh, they, and they send, for example, 10 workers to work from here, that maybe can be a problem because that establishes you like to the company that you that the company is working from here, 
And in that terms, they will have problems in the tax administration and also in the social security. But if you are just one or two, that's another problem for the moment. For the moment. <laughs> No, that, that, no, that's right. If you have a, an illness or whatever, or you have an accident or something like that, normally, okay, normally uh, you are paying uh, the social security or your companies in your countries, and your countries in this, in this case are part of the European Union. So the Spanish government have to uh, to make an agreement with that authorities of the, your of your countries to pay here your your accident payments or your accident illness or whatever, okay. But that's a type of things that we have to 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 speak with here with la tesorería, de la seguridad social is what is, is the uh, is the organism here that uh, manage all that type of things. So maybe if you want, we can make a, a question for them to to know exactly uh, what happened in that cases. Okay, if you want. That would be awesome. Okay, I've got a couple of online questions. Uh, first one, I run a UK company. If I spend over six months in Tenerife, would I still pay UK corporation tax and then the Spanish tax, my personal income, when I withdraw my salary and dividends from the company? No, but that's, that's the one. <laughs> that's a more complex one, okay? <laughs> that's, but it's corporate, that's a corporate uh, uh, UK, tax. Yes. UK corporate tax. Yeah. So he wants to spend over six months in Tenerife, would he still pay UK corporation tax and then the Spanish tax for his personal income when I withdraw my salary and dividends from the company? Sí, bueno, bueno, cuando salgo de dividendos de la compañía, de sí como lo de Rachel. No, in that case, if if they are living here and you uh, put out all the dividends of your company. That is in the UK. It always depends of if you are the tax resident here or not. If you are the tax resident here, you will have to declare all the dividends as uh, as tax resident here in Spain. Yeah. Uh, it's the, that's not a. It's complex in in terms of uh, this a corporate tax that is in England the the, the business and the, then you, uh, I I receive the dividend from from England or for the UK or wherever, but. At the end, it's the same. It's about tax rates. Yeah? Tax rates. It's, if he lives here more than 193 days, yeah. then they will have to declare all the dividends here. Yeah. I've got a couple. Of, I've actually got a couple of questions that are all related to that. Uh, with dividends or with the corporate? No, in terms of if they go over the 83 days. So another one is from Becky. Becky Wilding. I'm a British and I'm a director. I'm British. Sure. And I'm a director of a British company that only operates in the UK. I work remotely from Tenerife and I plan to stay longer than 183 days. Does this mean I should pay tax here? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Can I just answer this quick? I think this is going to be a quick yes as well. So another one, another one. Is it possible to stay more than 183 days and not to become financial resident? E.g. establishing a company here and in home country, job contracts, etc. So That's a very confusing yeah. question. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> it's a, it's a very confusing, I don't know how to answer that one. Yeah, it's, but he's, what he's trying to say is can he stay more than 183 days and not become a financial resident? That's, no. That has no sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you pass more than 183 days, it's the same that I have, same. have already said. Yeah. So. Uh, and something quite different. I'm, a, I'm autonomo for two years now, initially in Mallorca and a year and a half here in Tenerife. I'd like to apply for VAT return for the past year. How can I do that? For the VAT return for the EG came in? Yeah, so already autonomo for two years now, initially in Mallorca, yeah, initially in Mallorca and a year and a half here in Tenerife. 
I'd like to apply for VAT return for the past year. He can do it. They can do it. Yeah, yeah he can do it. If he if you have uh, support all the uh, all the EGIC tax in his invoices or wherever, he can apply for the return of that VAT that he has uh, passed. But if he has the tax return here or wherever, mm -hmm. um, it is different. So I, that case, uh, I have to check uh, and to study because it's completely different. Yeah. It's something more specific. Okay. The other thing is, is these comments are going to be online later anyway, so we can follow up on them. Uh, one more? One more, okay. <laughs> can I be employed by a company and be self-employed for a minor side hustle in Spain? In Germany, you can do this, apparently. Here also. Here uh, we call that here um, uh, pluriactividad. And for example, you can be here working for a company and also be in self-employment. Okay. So you can have the two. Yeah. That's benefit have benefits in terms of social security. And the only thing is that in your in your tax annual return you have to include the two incomes that you have, one for work and another for your activity. It's okay. nothing more. Easy one. That's an easy one, <laughs> yeah. That's it for now. Is everything in I don't know. Yeah, I have one more. Yeah, let's say I buy a property uh, for a rental business. I put a rental business, and in my yearly declar uh, in my annual declaration, uh, and I deduct the taxes from the from buying the property uh, from my income. What was the question? Because so I didn't. Let's say I buy a property for yeah. a rental business. Yeah. Yeah, for your business. Yeah, for my business. For yeah. Uh, uh, um, so I establish a sociedad limitada. I buy the property through the Sociedad Limitada. Okay. Then, at the end of the year, yeah. I do my tax declaration, and can I deduct from my tax declaration the taxes that I pay by buying the property? So normally, if you if you buy uh, if you buy the property with the, your limited uh, company, uh, after after the year. You only have to pay. It depends if you if you pay the ETP uh, tax or if you pay uh, the VAT. Do you pay VAT? No, not yet. The uh -huh. ETP? No, no, not yet. I haven't, I haven't paid it yet. I'm trying to figure out how should I do it. What? I'm trying to figure out how should I do it. I haven't done it yet. Ah, you haven't. Done it. Okay, okay. Well. Normally, if you want to uh, to buy a property to your company, and you are going to use it for for the for your activity, right? Yes. yes. Okay, not for living or something like that. I mean, for some, no, no, sometimes. It's a rental business, so a temporary rental business. So the property is going to serve it, be serving a purpose for the for the okay. business. Okay. In the time, in that in that thing, we have to know if the building is like. Uh, first, it's a first building uh, that is a new construction or not? Like, because that depends of the if you have to pay ETP or the VAT. That's the first thing. If it's already an old building, that's going to be. For more, normally, in that case, you will have to pay the ETP. That is the 6.5 percent. Mm -hmm. In your case, you have you will have to pay it, and you put uh, all uh, all the total amount of, of your of the building in your accounting. As an asset, that's all. I have no, and that expense that you pay in the ADB will be more value of your of your house. That's the only thing. Okay. 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 And one other question. Yeah. Um, let's just say I, I establish a company here and I provide services to a customer in France, and, and they need a bill for the services that they are paying. Um, so can I give them a bill? And the bill is going to be declared here in Spain, and they're going to declare the same bill in France. Um, no, what, what time, you, are, you are providing services? Yes. Services. Uh, you provide the service from here. You work from yes. here. I work from here. Uh, I have a, a, then you just, one, you just uh, have to do one invoice. No, nothing to, nothing like that. Just one. Okay. The only thing in your case is to know if you have to put the VIT, the AGIC, or not. That's the only thing. In your case, if you are a service, I have to check which service it is it. But if we, in normal condition, you will have not to put, uh, to put the VIT. Okay. So okay. I don't want to, I don't, 
to give them the invoice in France. But who told you that about the, the invoice? No, I'm asking. No, 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 no. In France, you don't have to do nothing. You're, you, it's, it's like a Spanish invoice. It's, it's, it's the same. You will send it to, to them with the, all the address and direction and the, and the, and the NIF of the, of the company in France, and that's all. Okay. It's completely valid, okay? Okay. Cool. Uh, it was an extension to this question about um, the dark team, uh, the dark team getting benefits from buying the house or renting. What if you, you're renting the property as a business, but you're also living there? Is that a for example, yeah. you, you can you can rent uh, a building for as an activity, okay? Mm -hmm. The only thing here in Spain, a requirement is that if you want <coughs> to start that type of business, you might have one person full contract in that in, the, in that business okay. or in that company. If you have that person, for sure you can rent, and if you have expenses of uh, taxes or whatever, you can deduct it of the of your tax and return. What do you mean one person? But if you have like um, uh, I don't know how to say that in English because it's very complex. It's like if you want to to have activity that is relation with renting properties, mm -hmm. okay? That's a specific activity in the VIT and also in the in the in the tax mm -hmm. in the personal tax. Okay, mm -hmm. to have that activity, you need you need one person full contract in your company. Okay. Or in your self-employment uh, activity. I cannot be that person by like myself. No. 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 You can rent it. Okay, you can rent a property, mm -hmm. but if you do it just by your own, mm -hmm. it's not. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be uh, for your personal tax. It's not gonna be a, a activity. Okay. It's just gonna be like a, a building a rents or something like that, but it's not gonna be a activity. You you no you will have to pay the VAT, okay? But well, it depends who. Uh, it also depends if you are going to rent the that place or that building for for living or for a place and an, an office or wherever. Holidays. Eh? Holidays. Holidays like uh, holidays renting. In that in that case, you will have to pay. You will have to submit the the VAT, no. okay? But in terms of uh, the Canary Tax Administration. Not in the uh, state uh, tax administration. It's a little bit complex in that case. Okay. Yeah, and another it's question: What is the percentage that you have to pay in taxes for gifts or inheritance from another country? For gifts or inheritance, inheritance from another country. So gifts, you mean, for example, donations, something like yes. that, that that you receive for another country. Yes. Which country? Which country? USA. USA. Money or assets? Money. Mm, well, in that case, if you are resident here, mm -hmm. you will have to pay the taxes here that we have here for uh, wills and donations, that you have to pay different taxes. Mm -hmm. And that's depending on the total amount, okay? Yeah. Normally, we have here in that type of, uh, you know, of donation and, or, or wills or whatever, in terms of heritage or that, we have a very strong benefit or incentives to pay less taxes here. In but Canary Yeah, in Canary Island. Yeah. Not in the rest of, as you know, here we have different autonomic communities, so all the communities have different, uh, in that type of uh, tax, that is the donation and the heritage tax, that different rates. Okay. Here in Spain, more or less, is before it was better, now we have like mm, a medium, a medium situation about that uh, that is probably good, but not like before, okay? Maybe you have to pay, I don't know, the cuánto puede pagar un por. It depends on so many things, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can explain me after if, if the, the terms of the. Yeah, it's very low compared <laughs> with other uh, communities, yeah. Hmm. That's right. That's and based on where you are in Yeah, yeah. No empadronado, no empadronado. Where are you living or resident? Because it's not the same empadronado. In empadronado is just, uh, for example, where I, I was living in Madrid, I was empadronado here. And I, I, I passed 10 years in Madrid. Okay. So... So where are you living at the, at the time you get here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, in the five... In the five, yeah. 
Uh, normally in that type of uh, taxes, you have to pay taxes or, or you can apply the benefits. Uh, depends on where you pass more time or in five years, you have, uh, you have to pass more time of two years and a half. In one in time or another. Okay, so if I was in Madrid the last year, but now I'm here. In the last five. The last five? In the, if in the last five, you pass more than two years and a half more than here in Tenerife? Well, neither, because I came, I came to Spain two years ago, a year and a half ago. I've been then wait, months. then wait. Okay, wait. so then it's gonna be. Okay, so the last. Then, then wait, wait, because for the moment, I mean, you have to wait and not do any donation or nothing, because in that case, <coughs> you will have to pay taxes for the uh, estate rates, and that's are very high. That's a very complex. Uh, we, we only have few minutes left. This is a very specific. Yeah, that's a very specific. Yeah. So maybe you can take that online. Um, any more questions here? Online, we have a, some. Can I do one more online? Yes, yeah. please. Let's Just one more on. online. Uh, financial resident issuing an invoice for services to a European company. Will that invoice bear IGIT or the VAT equivalent of that country? Okay, that's the same question uh, we have already answered. Uh, in, in that case, it's the same. It, it depends if it's a service or a sales of goods. So that depends. If it's a service, normally, normally, we ha I have to check the specific case, but normally you don't have to apply the VAT uh, of the EGIC, okay? So you, sell, you, you, you send invoice without EVAT, but we, you also cannot, uh, maybe, it depends on the country, you will, uh, the company, uh, in maybe in France or Germany, where will have to declare like the um, like the expense of the of the VAT and also the VAT that he have to to put in the invoice. I don't know how to say that in English because it's, it's a specific word, the uh, inversión del sujeto pasivo, but that's very complex to say in English. So I have to find the word. <laughs> Is there any benefit, like, uh, I mean, I'm self-employed, self like, uh, registered in Madrid? Yeah. And if I would like to change here, is there any benefit regarding uh, taxes? Not only VAT, because it's not interesting for me, because I'm just an invoice to your trade union, so it's without VAT and all that things. So, uh, just in terms of taxes, is there... Is there you mean in personal in taxes? Area? In personal taxes? In, uh, in yeah, 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 personal tax. Is, is yeah. Madrid? Madrid have a very good also tax rates, okay, in terms of personal taxes. But here, I think that if you are living here, more or less, it's the same. So, if you want to change, you will not notice big difference. If you say, for example, Andalusia or Catalonia, I would say for sure, pay here. But between Madrid and Tenerife, it's more or less the same. And can you change this uh, financial? It's the same that I, my, my sister told me that if you have to, if it depends on where do you pass more than five years in the last five years, if you are at the time moving inside Spain, it's the same if you, if you are start moving in you're between. You're moving inside Spain, but you move like five times a year. What, what do you do? Five times a year, but you mean in, in, in Spain? Yeah, for example. Who knows that? This is very. <laughs> it's very complex. That who knows? That you only, you're the only one. And the tax administration, the only thing that they that they will do is, okay, where's uh, the, the domicilio fiscal, fis, uh, fiscal uh, or tax address? Madrid. Okay, Madrid. And if you have the the bad luck of uh, inspection or something like that, well, in that case, you have to prove everything about that you are living in Madrid or wherever. That's the only thing. I have my, my I'm, I'm registered in Madrid right now, and I'm co-working in Saxony, not a co-working, it's, it's like a small office I was running in that place, but I don't have anything to do with that place anymore. So I'm a bit worried that it's something a bit... No, don't, we, don't be worried about that. No, don't, if you pay taxes in Spain, you are, you are a Spanish citizen. So yes. if you are working, uh, if you are paying taxes here of the personal tax, in la renta, the, the only thing that can uh, uh, that you can have problems if you, for example, apply for a deduction, a canary deduction that you don't have to apply, or something like that. But 
The rest is not necessary, okay? Yeah. Finito. Finito. Thank you. <laughs> no more question. No more question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being there. Um, so we're going to stop the online version now, right?